Hey moms and dads, it's Dr. Michelle Doherty over at Lifetime Health and Wellness and I just wanted to thank you all for joining me along with the National Family Wellness Alliance, formerly known as the National Wellness Foundation, to bring to you Kick the Sick. Um, this is, it's a tough time of year uh, for many families because whether you're starting to dread the allergies, the coughs, the sore throats, what have you, the first thing that comes to many families' minds is, okay, do we have a parent that can stay home? I'm going to have to miss work. Um, you know, we're not going to be able to get the other kids to their extracurriculars. And then round and round we go. And you feel like you're stuck and you feel like you're losing. And it, it stinks to even hear that from the parents that will come here. But uh, that's why we're sharing this today. So we really hope that you'll take away a lot of good nuggets but more importantly, you feel empowered to actually take action and make some changes because there are definitely some things within your control. And then, of course, there are things that are not in your control. So we are going to get started here. So just uh, briefly about me, for those of you who are not familiar with us here, um, I'm a certified pediatric and family wellness chiropractor, um, just one of a couple in the Naperville area. And so um, I, as well as my team, we take that very seriously because we're continuing to train to give you the best and always trying to stay at the forefront so that we can better serve our community. And um, uh, we do weekly trainings. We're constantly working on technique and research and all of those types of things. And I'm in South Naperville, so there you have it. And why do we do this sort of stuff? Um, I have a little dude, um, his name is Kevin, and he's a kindergartner. So since he started preschool, you know, we were, you know, his immune system got well exercised, I will say. Um, the one thing that I'm really proud of is he's able to kick things pretty quickly. I don't mind that he gets sick. It's his body's way of expressing symptoms. It's maturing his brain, his immune system, so on and so forth. But also too, my parents struggled with me in the sense that um, I was an emergency C-section baby. I was very colicky. I had chronic ear infections. So I was on antibiotics quite a bit. And then that morphed into tonsillitis. And uh, you know, I had just a lot of ears, nose, throat issues, you know, from the get-go all the way until I went to college. So it was, um, it, it was tough on my parents, and um, I remember, you know, being more of a sick kid growing up, and I don't want that for other families, and, you know, that's why I've chosen to educate myself, but also that's the passion behind, you know, why we do what we do. We really believe in adding to another child's health and adding to their life versus trying to take things away because it's really about just maximizing their own quality of life, whatever that looks like. So that, that's what we do in a nutshell. So by nature, um, children, I'm not sure if my video is covering, there we go. Um, children are typically born very healthy. I mean, you figure, over the course of nine months, um, they're in this bubble of an environment um, with everything that they need. And the reality is they're exposed to everything that, you know, that, that mom is. And so um, it's not just important as far as like the nutrition, of course that is. But another really important piece is stress, stress on mom. You know, did she have trouble conceiving? Um, did she have, you know, a fear-based pregnancy? Was she considered high risk? You know, all of these things, your, the hormones that are shared between mom and baby, um, that's a real thing. So then when baby comes out, they're either already wired for potentially a fight or flight response, more of kind of a stress state um, than not. So you figure life doesn't the real deal doesn't begin once baby comes out. I mean, everything is getting processed while in utero. 
And as many moms will tell you, um, the birth process can be traumatic, obviously not only for her, but also for the baby itself. And that's the very reason why we do check kids. You know, they get their APGAR scores, they're getting other things checked, but not too often are they, are they getting their neurology checked, you know, looking, scanning their nervous system, seeing how well things are functioning from the get-go and how well their bodies are going to be able to adapt to changes like the environment or the weather or what have you. And so as I have already mentioned, um, whenever we have traumatic birth, and in particular, um, cesareans, whether they're planned or emergency, um, forceps, vacuum extractions, all of those things can present a lot of stress in that upper neck area, which houses a good majority of the nervous system, especially when it comes to immune function and um, rest, growth, development, and healing. So of course we wanna be checking those areas and making sure that these kids have the best start to life. We're gonna put me right down at the bottom there. Okay, so we know that there's a time and place for interventions and things like that, but sometimes routine labor procedures, you know, such as, you know, inducing labor, um, beginning on a cycle of meds or maybe restricting moving positions and so on. Um, all of these things can create more stress to an already um, stressful situation. And so it's important just to be cognizant of these things. And it's the very reason why we will check um, newborns, especially if they've had to have these interventions because the research shows that the majority of these infants have a subluxated or um, restricted motion in that upper neck area. And this is part of how we perceive our environment. There we go. Okay, um, so we're, we're aware of the common childhood diseases out there. Um, one thing that is worth noting is by the time a child turns two years old, they will have an essentially uh, fully mature and developed immune system. And it's important to strengthen and prime it and mature it. And that means not living in an over-sterilized environment, not... Um, having them in a bubble where they're not exposed to anything. They need to be able to have some of those exposures so that their bodies have a chance to be able to respond. So then they create these antibodies and this memory to be able to kick in when they're exposed to these things a second, third, fourth time around. So just allowing kids to be able to eliminate toxins. Um, you know, chicken pox is a great example. People don't die of the chicken pox. Um, I know growing up, it was a popular thing to have chicken pox parties because if you could get it naturally, you have lifelong immunity. Um, you can have a vaccine nowadays, but it's not gonna set you up for lifelong immunity. It's a different um, type of immunity. So why is it that some kids get sick? I mean, if you think about it, we are, or I should say the kids are facing a lot more stress in this day and age than us as parents did, you know, way back when. And that's worth noting, you know, there's maybe there's more demands on them. They're getting less sleep. They have more electronics. Um, they're cutting down on physical education at school. So they're not running around as much. There's just, we're almost setting them up to get sick, but there are obviously things that we can be doing. But worth noting that if you have more stress on your nervous system, it's going to impair how your immune system responds to what, whatever it's coming in contact with. So what we try to do is help boost that natural response by trying to keep more balance and order so things can work the way they're designed to. It's not to say that you're gonna avoid all sickness by leading a healthy lifestyle, but you wanna know that your body can kick into high gear and adapt when it's called upon so that you can get through it and then be on to the next thing. So to understand how this happens, yeah, you need to take a look at how the spine and nervous system affect the body. So your, the extension of your brain known as the spinal cord, it's soft neurology and it's being protected by these 24 movable hard bones called vertebra. And your nervous system runs from the brain down the spine and 
then it branches out into every single organ gland, muscle, and tissue out there. So it has its hand in everything. So you have to look at the source. Your brain controls everything. And the reason as chiropractors, the reason we even go to the spine is because that's how we access the nervous system. And there are a lot of different techniques in order to be able to do that. Now, if you experience one of the three stresses, there's physical stresses on the body. You figure by the time a kid turns a year old, on average, nearly half, about 47%, will have fallen on their head. You know, it's unfortunate, but that's kind of the reality. And by the time they turn five years old, they would have had over 200 major falls. So that's just from a physical stress standpoint. Chemical stress is gonna be, you know, what we're exposed to between air, water, and food. And the reality is things like sugar, you know, they feed uh, the microorganisms, they feed bacteria and viruses. And then when we look at mental emotional stress factors, you know, think were their bodies already primed for stress just from labor and delivery or the, the prenatal period? Um, or are they overscheduled, you know, or is there a rough environment at home with, um, with parents? So all of these things will factor in and it can impair your body's ability to rest and restore. And if we're not fully recharging our batteries, then it's kind of, you know, leaving a gap open where our defenses are down and then we're more likely to get sick and maybe chronically be stuck in this cycle of getting better and being sick over and over again. So a great quote from um, one of my favorite biologists, Dr. Bruce Lipton, is that the function of the nervous system is to perceive the environment around you and coordinate the behavior of all other cells. And that really, it just, it speaks to chiropractic wholeheartedly um, because the goal is to allow that brain-body connection to work the way it's supposed to so that you can live and fully express life the way you were designed to. So when you are in a state of imbalance, um, your autonomic nervous system, meaning the stuff that's going on in the background that you don't have to consciously be aware of or in control over, um, that state of imbalance caused by the three forms of stress, physical, chemical, mental, emotional, it creates a state of inflammation. Um, and that leads to interference of that brain-body connection because those the muscles that surround the spine, they become taut and tense because of the inflammatory response from those other forms of stress. And then it causes um, things not to work correctly or appropriately, especially when it comes to your immune system, your digestive system, and your endocrine or hormonal system. And by far, my, my favorite nerve uh, in the whole world is the vagus nerve. And it is the single um, the longest nerve that is responsible for bringing basically a state of calm to your overall system. It's like the brakes of your car. It is your immune boosting, your anti-inflammatory. It is responsible for getting um, digestion moving and um, relaxing the system in general. It slows down respiration. It's responsible for sensory regulation, which is huge. Um, a lot of parents are struggling um, as families, you know, because they may have one or more kids that either A, could be on the spectrum, or they have sensory processing issues. And of course, the vagus nerve is also involved in the social, emotional regulation and expression. So it's really quite awesome. And it's, um, as chiropractors, the way that we can access and affect the vagus nerve is when we're checking that upper neck area, where just a lot of these, um, these pieces are to be able to perceive the world around you and knowing that the vagus nerve is so close to that top spinal nerve in the neck if this guy is out of alignment which in over 80 percent of cases that's found to be true um, with newborns then the vagus nerve is going to be affected so you have think of a coin heads and tails right you know you have two sides to your nervous system as well you have the parasympathetic which is recovery and sleep and growth and healing and digestion. And then we have the other side, which most of us as adults and many kids now are living in the, in the sympathetic nervous system. That's more like the gas pedal. This is fight, 
flight response, freeze, stress, anxiety, fear, all of those things. And going back to Dr. Bruce Lipton, you can't be in growth and protection at the same time. You cannot be on the gas and the brakes at the same time and expect to get anywhere. So usually when you're wired for stress, your body just, you need a pattern interrupt and that's where chiropractic can be very useful. So just a little bit of nerdy stuff real quick because I wanted to share as much practical information as possible and trying to simplify as best as that I can. But um, you have two sides of your immune system, an immune response. You have your Th1 and you have your Th2. So Th1 is the externalization. This is getting fevers out, you know, the heat out, pus and mucus and, and rashes, you know, so expressing through the skin, coughing, diarrhea, vomiting. That's all important stuff. You don't want to suppress that because that's how your body tries to get rid of what's um, not serving it. And then we have Th2, which is more internalization. So those are the memory T cells that they, they become activated after the body has become um, infected. And as I mentioned before, um, those first 24 months um, are, are important. And for those of you who, who nurse or pump, oh my gosh, it's one of the best things that you can do if you're able to do it because you have a lot of antibodies in breast milk. And if you are feeding on demand or you know, you're rotating your stash of pumped milk, you want to know that your body or your baby is going to be um, getting the benefits of the antibodies of whatever is going around. So that's another um, great thing, another positive for breastfeeding um, and pumping. So the correction of spinal misalignments can play a significant role in the treatment of tonsillitis. So there's, there's a lot of research out there on chiropractic and immune, and in my opinion, there needs to be more. And so we um, are at the forefront of being able to take part in that type of research. But the one thing I'll say, if you remember before, I was an emergency C-section baby, and I had a lot of tonsillitis going on. And tonsillitis goes hand in hand with movement restriction of the spine at the base of the skull. So um, when you have blockage at this level, you're more likely to have things like tonsillitis, which is inflammation of the tonsils, an important immune system organ. And this is the very reason why we definitely wanna check C-section babies because of how close that neurology is in connection. Um, ear infections, that's another big thing that we'll see here in practice. We do co-care um, with pediatricians in the area, which is awesome. But aside from well visits, ear infections by far, they're the most common reason, um, you know, p uh, parents will bring their kids to a pediatrician. They account for more than 35% of pediatric uh, pediatrician visits in our country at this time. And the one thing that I do want to say is there's research out there about, you know, the efficacy, the effectiveness of this drug with this condition and so on. But I did want to touch on ear infections simply because um, we get asked all the time, you know, whether, you know, do we do antibiotics? Do we not? So I guess the, the short answer of it is if it's caused by a bacterial infection, antibiotics are gonna be an appropriate method of treatment. The other reality is that approximately 70 to 80% of ear infections are viral, meaning they don't respond to antibiotics. So that's something to take note of because what do you do for a viral infection? You have to wait it out. You gotta, you gotta do the best you can and hope that your body can perform or do things to help naturally boost um, immunity so your body can take care of what's going on. So yes, this is just another bit of research um, done at the University of Pittsburgh. And um, obviously if you're giving antibiotics for a viral infection, you're just gonna deplete the gut immunity, especially if you're not giving probiotics in conjunction. And then we're likely to get stuck in this vicious cycle of infection after infection. And it could be recurring ear infection. It could be a different infection, but knowing that your defenses are down and we're continuing to kick it hard, it, it leaves, you know, it leaves us um, helpless almost. 
So it's important to know what the cause is and then proceed um, accordingly. Um, so looking at chiropractic and ear infections. So chiropractic has a great track record when it comes to things like ear infections. Ultimately, it's not um, your body does the healing. We're simply the liaison. So if we're finding an area of the spine that is not moving and functioning properly, then the output or the response is going to be the body's going to do the best it can given the situation. So it will always fight for us. But if there is too much accumulated stress that becomes stuck on there, then it can struggle. And that's that's where we can come in and help you parents, you know, whether it's for yourself or your kids. So as far as, it's great to know what you can also do at home. This is a short list. I wanted to keep it short and sweet, but yeah, hydrating, no matter what type of sickness, hydrating is, is fantastic. It's liquid life. You know, there's oxygen in water and we need oxygen to our brain and every cell in our body. So sometimes a steam bath is good, just trying to get things warm and moving and circulating. Um, one thing you can do for ear pain in particular, um, nowadays, like you go to, go to the health food store or like a Whole Foods or something, and they'll have like, you know, specific ear relief oil and it'll have the mullein oil. Um, so one thing that we did growing up, I still remember, um, because I would get them a lot, remember, my parents would cut a clove of garlic and just saute it a little bit in some extra virgin olive oil, not to the point of boiling, but you know, so it's infused and then just take a cotton ball, put a few drops in each ear and then put a, a clean dry cotton ball in there and just kind of keep it in there for as long as you can, change it out, do it a couple of times a day. Um, the cool thing about garlic is it's got antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal properties. How cool is that? So stuff that most people already have at their disposal. And then, of course, chiropractic adjustments. We know that your neurology in the upper neck area, that's feeding eyes, ears, nose. And in particular, we have the eustachian tube. So it's this tube that runs from the, the middle ear down to the top of the throat. And because of the anatomy in little kids compared to adults, we need to, sometimes that area just has to be opened up a little bit. And an adjustment can help facilitate that. Um, we have asthma. Um, asthma, obviously it's a state of inflammation and it is aggravated by too much mucus and there's bronchoconstriction. Um, so as far as what you can be doing, in addition to what you're doing medically is uh, number one, again, I go back to hydration. You wanna try to thin out the mucus. Um, so not dry it up so inflammation can spread. Um, oftentimes you'll see like people will take um, anti-mucigens, if I'm even saying that correctly. So while that'll eliminate the mucus, it may dry it up and it creates more inflammation. And again, this infection or, you know, complication can spread. So hydration is great. Eliminating dairy. Um, conventional dairy is very mucus producing. And if you're already congested, you know, here or here, like you don't, you don't need to trap that stuff in. And for those of you that dabble with essential oils, um, you know, you need to look at your source, but there's a lot of breathe blends that include some eucalyptus, spearmint, that kind of thing, just to kind of open things up. And of course, chiropractic adjustments. Um, as I mentioned, every nerve that branches from the spine. So I want you to think of your spine as you know, your brain and nervous system because your spinal cord is simply an extension of your brain and the brain stem. So um, while most people think of it as um, bones and you know, muscle and ligament attachments, it is, it's protecting your neurology. And it's far reaching. We, you know, I can think of a, she came to us when she was three years old and she's almost six years old now. And as truth would have it, since she started chiropractic care, um, she wasn't needing her inhaler. She could go back to um, her part-time preschool at the time without having, um, without the school having to call mom in order to pick her up because she was reacting and couldn't participate in recess and things like that. So it's really, it's a sad thing, you know, when you feel like 
the things that you know most kids are enjoying and wouldn't give a second thought to um it could be you know um quite a problematic thing for a kid with asthma eczema I'm not sure how well this uh this picture is going to show up but eczema is one of those things that you know immediately we go to trying to take care of it from the outside in and that can give some temporary relief but know that this is more coming from you know an internal condition and your skin is the largest organ and one of the ways to get rid of toxins is through the skin it could be a rash it could be dry patches it could be any number of those things and so as far as parents wanting to be super proactive and wanting to know what can I do for my kid, what can I do? So I feel like I'm just helping my little one out. Um, one of the first things that I'll go to is omega-3 fatty acids because it's great for skin health, eye health, joint health, um, cardiac health, uh, nervous system health. It's really um, a great thing. And there's great ones on the market. You can definitely get in touch with us to know you know what what we use or what we would recommend vitamin d supplementation is great for overall immune stuff it's great for hormonal stuff but uh, vitamin d is fantastic the vitamin d council suggests 1000 ius of vitamin d d3 for 20 pounds of body weight so just to give you an idea on that um, probiotic supplementation so if our gut is just not um, able to perform you know we need to replenish it and probiotics are um, a way to do that when you're giving little one a bath if you go on amazon and just grab yourself like a dechlorinating bath ball or if you're doing showers get a, a dechlorinating shower filter chlorine dries out the skin and it's a further irritant so that's an easy thing um, instead of using um, conventional lotions you know coconut oil is pretty clean um, sometimes this can be caused from food intolerance or food sensitivities you get a panel done and uh, chiropractic adjustments again so how if you think about um, thinking about your liver for example if it's like the vacuum filter of, of the bag most vacuums these days don't use a bag but i'm thinking about my childhood and we had the bag so we know that it's important to empty out the bag every now and then to get rid of the stuff. So if your liver becomes overburdened with toxins, things are going to be spilling out. It's gonna make you toxic. It's gonna to produce different things like this. So again, how does your liver work appropriately? Well, yes, minimizing the chemical stressors, but also making sure your brain can effectively talk to your liver. So, um, Chiropractic adjustments, they're a great foundation. It's the one thing you can't do for yourself, but there are plenty of things that you can do. So fevers, colds, and coughs. So we recently, um, in the office and on our social media, we've been talking about things like fevers and immune things and so on. So what do we do at home? You know, yeah, of course, making sure that your kid is alert, you know, can make eye contact, um, arousable, um, they're able to take in fluids, they're, they're going on the potty, capillary refill, you know, just making sure that things fill up appropriately. Um, you wanna make sure that they're bundled to bed. Um, when it comes to baths, you don't need to put them in an ice cold bucket, but just more of a body, body temperature type of a bath with Epsom salts. Epsom salts are nothing more than magnesium, and that's very calming just for the body in general. Um, if you want to do some oils, you can do like a lavender chamomile mix and just um, follow the nervous system tracks down. So the base of the neck down to the top of their hip bones and just kind of massage down, just trying to um, kick the parasympathetics. That's the rest and digestion. Kick that on. And um, homeopathy. Um, we have a great relationship with a local pediatrician who's actually trained in that. It's not my specialty, but that is something that uh, can be very beneficial for those who want to do more um, hydration you can see a theme here right um, minimal foods right now all of your body's energy is trying to 
you know, overhaul whatever this uh, organism is that the body has come in contact with. So we want to reserve all that energy to fight versus flooding it with a bunch of food and then it has to switch gears and try to digest all of that. So there's a reason why kids will lose their appetite. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Hydration, you definitely wanna keep them hydrated. Um, glutathione is a great antioxidant um, which supports immunity. Skipping things like the Tylenol and Motrin. So I'm gonna speak a little bit about fevers. Um, we get asked all the time, you know, what, when's the fever too high? Um, you know, and you're, you're gonna get different schools of thought. Ultimately, follow your gut, you know, do what you are comfortable with. I know my little dude, uh, he tends to run high fevers. You know, his body's like ready to fight right away. And so I know to take a look at some of these things that we just discussed and that's on this slide. So, um, so with that, too high, I mean, for many parents, you know, 100 is too high. For others, 105 could be that threshold. But just know that every single virus and bacteria has a specific DNA code that when your immune system reads it, it tags it, and it knows what has to get done in order to kill it off. So the best analogy I can come up with, I've got two for you. So the one that I re recently shared was, especially since uh, we just had Thanksgiving, is roasting a turkey. Now, I did not cook Thanksgiving this year, but I would imagine it, you needed to cook it probably at around 400 or something like that, 450. And then depending on how big it is, that determined how long. So the last thing you're gonna do is put the turkey in the oven and put it on like 100 and then expect you know, after a few hours that it's gonna be safe for consumption and that it's cooked all the way through. Cause it's not. And your body operates the exact same way. It is so intelligent that it knows exactly what to do. And so you need to give your body or your child's body a fighting chance to get to where it needs to go. And um, helping to support the fever to do what it needs to do and sometimes they'll have like a crappy night or two and they'll wake up sweaty, but that's a sign that the fever is broken and that everything else will be uphill from that point. So the biggest thing is keep your kids comfortable. Um, think twice before trying to suppress a fever. I mean, if it's going on like for an incredibly long period of time or it's, it's hovering past that 105 mark, um, then yes, I mean, obviously use your gut, contact the pediatrician, um, look at those things, but ultimately encourage the natural process. Okay, so when it comes to nutrition, I mean, there's so many things that we can do, but really like the, the top basic things are gonna be, watch sugar. If you think about it from Halloween to the new year, it's nothing but that, you know, it, it's like every month, you know, it's literally nothing but sugar and baked goods and sweets and things like that. That is the preferred diet for bacteria and viruses. So by eliminating sugars, food colorings and dyes, preservatives, high fructose corn syrup, caffeine, those types of things, by eliminating those, you give your body a better fighting chance either to avoid things to begin with or to help you navigate uh, through the sickness quicker. Eating fermented foods, that's a natural way to get probiotics if you don't wanna be doing um, chewables or capsules or things like that. So the refrigerated sauerkraut, so it's been fermented with sea salt versus pickled with vinegar, big difference. So sauerkraut, miso, tempeh, kombucha, which is like a fermented uh, black tea, all of these things, you only need very little amounts. One way to know is if, um, if you have too much of it, then you will be um, expressing it out of your system pretty quickly. Uh, removing toxins, chemical toxins. So think about the bounce dryer sheets. They're, you know, they're artificial um, scents and uh, they can interfere with breathing and so on. So knowing that the first three years of life are crucial to experience acute inflammatory responses. So exercising that immune system, it is okay to get sick it's actually very crucial and important for brain maturation. And um, compared to when I was a kid, you know, depending on whatever vaccine schedule you choose to do, because um, there are different ones, but 
when you're having too much in a short period of time, for some kids, it, it it's too much for them, for their bodies to process. So it's, it's a bunch of things that um, require your immune responses attention. And so the biggest thing is, you know, when you're making those vi visits to the pediatrician, just make sure your, your kid is already well to begin with and doing a lot of the good things that we have discussed already. So what would I do? Um, I'm a pediatric chiropractor, so I would highly encourage every kid um, to get adjusted, you know, whether they have an issue or not, but more importantly, how do you know if you need to get adjusted? You would get scanned. Um, there is fantastic technology out there um, that our office uses and many other offices will use um, in order to evaluate just how well your nervous system is working at the time. Um, is it well adapted to stress? Is there a lot of stress stuck on? It could be part of the reason why we're in this cycle of sick. Um, hydration, of course, nutrition, we talked about decreasing sugars, getting enough rest. The little ones need a lot of sleep. Um, and you as adults, you know, and unfortunately you're gonna be kept up at night when your kids are chronically sick. So, I mean, for adults, it's seven to nine hours is ideal. You know, my little dude in kindergarten, you know, he, they need between 10 and 12 hours, you know, because they're already done with the naps, but, you know, encourage that. Movement, um, yeah, recesses getting shorter. And unfortunately, if sometimes if there's snow or rain, they don't let them go outside. So you need to help them you know, work through some of that stuff, get that fresh air, um, it's not gonna hurt. Um, and then importantly, just trust your gut as, as a parent, um, that's super important. Um, and the one thing that I, I did leave out and I wanted to um, make sure that I touched on is when it comes to your lines of defense and when we talk about a good symptom or a bad symptom, as I mentioned, fevers are a good symptom. Coughing and sneezing are great. Vomiting and diarrhea, also great. And how does that kick in? If things are working well and your immune system is able to step in, you know, in the initial stages, it can help reject whatever is coming about. This is why you'll see kids, sometimes they'll puke in the backseat of your car and then done, like nothing ever happened that's a pretty um, pretty strong immune response, which is great. But if they don't, if they actually get past the bouncer up here and things are allowed to continue to travel down, they're looking for the nearest exit. So that could be diarrhea for your kid. So the important thing is it has a way to get out. But if we are suppressing all of these things, it will internalize, if you remember that TH2 response, and it can become more of an autoimmune condition. And then it comes to a point where oh, my kid never gets fevers, but they're always sick. So this is because we've suppressed that TH1, that side of their immune response, and we have to get back to that. So balancing it, balancing your immune system by balancing your nervous system is gonna be key. So what I hope that you leave here tonight with is ask questions, whether it's of your pediatrician, um, your, your significant other, pediatric chiropractors, ask the questions. Um, do your part to reduce stress um, in your child's life. So when it comes to the mental stressors, the physical stressors, you know, um, chemical stressors in particular, those are all huge things. And then of course, get your child scanned. You won't know unless you can see. And so our goal is to make the unseen seen so we can take the appropriate actions. So with that, um, we've wrapped up. We covered a lot of ground. Um, we went a little bit more in depth than we probably needed to, but um, hopefully some of this clicked for you. And if you have any questions at all, the one thing that I'm proud to say that we are doing is 100% of initial scans done at our office. We are donating 100% of that to pediatric research because it's we need to fund that more. Um, just because we need to create that awareness out there that there is another way. You don't have to sit there and take it. And I'm sure you are sick and tired of having your kids be sick and tired all the time. So definitely reach out to our office. 
You can check our website out in the link. You can share this video. We just want to get great information out there for parents and then letting, letting them know that there is another way and we're here for you. We've seen it all and we just wanna support these little kids so that they can grow up into happy, healthy adults. And with that, I hope you guys have a great night.